Hello everyone, my name is Rafal and I would like to welcome you to my YouTube channel. Today, I would like to do a very short video and jump back into the AI conversation. I've been having some very interesting discussions about AI and instead writing back and forth, I think it's going to be better if I'm going to just put this video and just explain some of those things to much broader audience. And I would like to dedicate this video, especially to photographers who are starting off, people who never have tried AI before and they kind of scared of it or they don't know how to approach it and it's going to be very very general um, I just want to share some of those things which you should be aware of jumping into this entire AI world and it's going to help you to basically navigate it through this entire process so before I jump in I just want to point it out I'm going to be talking mainly about headshots AI can be used in many different fields of photography but because I specialize in headshots this is what I'm going to be talking about and also i'm not going to be talking about retouching my images when it comes to the skin and all this cool stuff i'm going to be mainly talking about replacing wardrobe and replacing backgrounds for my headshots because that's where i'm using ai the most i have separate different software for uh, retouching uh, my images but that's a completely different topic i just want to mainly talk about replacing some of those things to elevate your headshots to completely different level and i know there is a lot of discussion about this there are some photographers who are all for it there are some who are against it at this point i'm trying to navigate it and see what i'm able to do but so far i see some amazing results even it's not easy and i'm going to explain it in a second but ai it's an amazing tool which is gonna stay with us for good and i think the quicker we learn how to use it and how to take advantage of it it's gonna benefit us for our business uh, for everything what do we do related to our photography so let's jump into this topic let's discuss this so i'm using this as an extension to elevate my images and taking them to the next level. So that's something which we have to point it out and I'm not using AI to fix my images. So typically, and that's the main thing what also I wanna point it out, I'm starting with a really good image. Image which is prepared, is already retouched and it's ready to go. And then I'm trying to come up with some kind of concept or some kind of idea which is gonna elevate and bring something fresh, something new to my image. So that's the main important thing. And this is how I approach AI to work with my headshots. So that's something which is extremely um, important in my opinion, because you have to have some kind of good starting point because AI at this point, it's not at the level where it's able to really fix stuff. Everyone who is using AI, you guys probably know AI has a lot of issues with hands, with ears, with hair. And I've noticed that on the much bigger scale, apparently it's getting better and better and better. But so far, everything what I have seen, it's not good. At this point, as I said, I'm using only AI, trying to create some very creative and interesting backgrounds, which put some different mood to my images. So if you jumping into this, make sure your starting point image is really good image which is clear which has proper lighting so your subject is also nicely separated from the background that's what's going to make your life much easier and for ai it will be much much easier to detect your subject separated from the background and then basically start working on something which is going to take your image to the next level so the next thing what i want to point it out is you have to be extremely patient with this whole process because i know there's a lot of photographers out there who told me hey i've i've tried it i tried a few times and i didn't get the results what i'm looking for and they were just giving up so just so you know ai spits out a lot of bad stuff like really bad and you have to be aware of this just because you get i don't know 10 20 different type of backgrounds which are awful doesn't mean it's going to produce those things over and over again at some point you will start getting stuff which they're going to be a little bit better and once in a while the ai spits something which is cool and that's why you have to be patient with this and don't give up right away you have to work with it and you want to wait till the moment where the ai 
finally will kind of get something which you like. I know it's kind of like ridiculous for some people, but it's the same process like you shooting your subject. You're not gonna get 100 amazing images. You're just working for it. So if you have a headshot session and then you're working with your clients in the beginning, you're getting some average stuff, then you're learning about your subject, you're trying to play with their posture, their face expression, and then you start getting some interesting stuff. And the same thing works with AI. At the beginning, when you're starting off, you put some prompts you're not getting the stuff what you like then you're working with those prompts you're changing you're adjusting things you're getting things better till the point where you start finally get something which makes you happy and the results going to be satisfying so as i mentioned be patient don't give up so quickly dedicate yourself a little bit of time and wait for the moment where AI actually start doing something which inspires you. The next thing is gonna be a little bit related to what I just said, but this is also extremely important. I remember when I started working with um, creating some interesting uh, backgrounds, I was keep changing the prompts. I was just adjusting them, removing some of them, putting new ones, and I was just all over the place. So one of the things what I would like to recommend is create, let's say a list of 10 prompts and basically run with them for, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 times and see what the AI is kind of giving you. If you're not getting anything satisfying after those, I don't know, 20, 30 runs, that means there's something has to be changed, but don't change them every time because I think AI also needs to figure it out what works, what doesn't work. And then with the time I was running through the same prompts over and over and over again. And then finally, seems like the AI kind of understood what I like and what I didn't like. And you can also in Photoshop make a note that this image is good, this is bad. And I think the AI can reach that and start implementing those stuff which you like. Then finally you will start getting something interesting. And, and lastly, what I want to point it out is try to analyze your images a little bit. Um, this is something which I highly recommend it. And this is something which also it's going to be helpful for you to learn about what your style is. Because I remember when I started working with AI, I was making those decisions fairly quickly. Either I like it or I didn't like it and I delete this stuff. So you have to just kind of take a little bit of time, um, look at some of those creations made by AI and analyze them. What is good about it? What I don't like about it? There's anything I can additionally adjust it to make this work. So there's, there's those little things which allows you to train your eyes and train your mind to see things differently. So that's something which is extremely, I think, important and that's what I do. So what I suggested to do is whenever your AI start creating, let's say, interesting backgrounds, delete those bad ones, keep the good ones, and then try to analyze them a little bit on the deeper level to see what you like and what you don't like. And then you will start seeing some kind of patterns towards things which are gonna make you see that, okay, you know what, this is the type of backgrounds and style or colors or tonality which you really like. And we need to learn that. I think that's an amazing tool to make you look at your images from completely different perspective. The AI can bring some different color palettes, can bring some different um, shapes on your background, can bring some different lines. Um, there's so many different things which can definitely change the dynamic of the image, can bring different colors to change the mood of the image. It's fascinating. In my opinion, this is not only a tool which allows you to take your images to the next level, but also teaches you about your own photography and how you can look at it. So as I said, if you never tried it, go for it, see what it can do for your images, how it can help you to elevate your images. I think it's it's something amazing and we should use that and we should take advantage of that. So I hope that was interesting. I know there's so much more into this, but I just wanna give you some kind of general information about how to approach this whole thing, how to look at it and how to just play with it. Um, just have fun with AI because as I said it's not going anywhere we need to somehow adopt it we need to learn how to deal with this and how to pretty much just make it part of our photography life so that's something which is crucial in my opinion so if you have
you have any questions, any concerns, you don't have to agree with me. I, I'm open to having discussions about this topic. I think it's going to disrupt this industry on the massive scale. So it's important that we communicate with each other. We talk about it and we share our experiences. And hopefully at some point we will be able to really take advantage of this and create something very spectacular. Okay. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned and I'll chat with you guys very soon. Bye-bye.